press the red button. Hi, everybody. Hi. Thanks for coming this morning to hear about something I'm obviously very passionate about, that to-do list. Hopefully you are, too. Um, a little bit about me before I get started. My name is Lily. Outside of work, I am someone who kind of fell into working in tech, although I'm not someone who thinks that screens are a universal good for our society, kind of these Bottles of oh, interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm not the best at tech, which you can <laughs> kind of see. Um, so that's important to know about me. Um, along those same lines, I also have um, sort of this leaning toward minimalism. I think it's kind of a trend in our culture now, which, um, which you'll see as we move through the different tasks list. Thank you for bearing with sitting in the darkness together. It kind of feels like a cozy, but hopefully not too sleepy. Hopefully you have some coffee. Um, and then also, my, I'm a child of a neuroscientist, and so having that kind of basis in science and iteration based on um, data is something that's a big part of my perspective on the world. Professionally, I, uh, I worked in nonprofits for quite a few years and then made my way into the tech space and to working in Drupal about three and a half years ago. So I'm kind of you know, semi-fluent, I guess, in this system, in this uh, world of working in agencies. And in my life working in agencies, I've had three different ta digital tasking systems that I've had to master and then use with my team. So also part of my perspective. Professionally, I work at an agency called Kalamuna. We're based here in the Bay Area. I'm based elsewhere in Denver. We have a remote team. And so um, we do this really amazing work building uh, um, building websites primarily in Drupal, also strategy and design for mission-driven organizations. And we're at the exhibit hall if you want to come say hello. So I had a whole agenda slide and then I realized this whole presentation is really two sections. One is why are we talking about this? And then two is this sort of iterative journey toward crafting what I think is the perfect tasking system and then going in Hopefully not painful depth, but I think really um, interesting and valuable depth as to how you can use it and how it can improve the way you manage your workday and maybe um, legs overall. So uh, there's this moment that I experienced. I was in a meeting with my boss and a bunch of other people, and I was sitting there and we were talking about something else. And then she said, can you do this other thing? Can you, oh, can, oh, Lily, can you handle this thing? And of course I said, yes, yes, right? Yes. And then I thought, I'm a smart person with a brain that comprehends and remembers things. I'll just remember that I said yes to doing that thing. Uh -huh. And then you know the meeting continues. We're talking about other things. And it's a few days later, and she checks in and says, so how about that thing that you said that you would do at that meeting? And it was the first time that I had thought about it at all in those intervening three days. And that moment was just the worst moment. And I'm sure you felt that, right? Where you just get called on not doing what you say you're going to do and you get every, the world's kind of fast and slow at the same time and you're like sweaty and you know, all this stuff at the same time and thinking, how am I gonna figure out what to say to her to kind of maintain this confidence that I'm a competent person who does what I say I'm going to do in the face of the fact that I totally forgot that I was said I was going to do this. And so I declared to myself in that moment that this is the last time that this is going to happen. And so I need a system to make things better. And I wish that my work day and my life looked like this. You know, you're just by yourself, calm, you see somewhere you wanna go, and you're just gonna slowly meander by yourself in this calm, you know, completely contained, uninterrupted frame of, uh, of life. But unfortunately, my workday looks a lot more like this. Um, I've worked in project management before. I do an account management role. I'm not someone who someone says, you know, spend eight to eight hours today solving this complex problem or spend four hours today designing this wireframe. My workday is much more like I'm trying to do the first thing and then I get a Slack message and then I get an email and then someone schedules a quick meeting with me and then there's this phone call and then all this stuff kind of goes along and it's just this, um, this chaos. And I found myself just sort of being pulled in every direction at the same time and then not really getting anywhere. And I'm not the first person to say this, but it's true. Agency life is just busy and chaotic. And even if you work in-house somewhere, your life is probably busy and chaotic as well. It's sort of the movement of our culture toward 
you know, we have to, we're overcommitted, we don't have enough time, we're overwhelmed, etc. And the other thing that's also true, and it's, I don't, I'm not the one to break this to you, but everyone says, you know, I'm so great at multitasking. I can multitask, I'm just going to manage all these things at the same time. And it's a myth. <laughs> and maybe you don't believe me, I'm not a neuroscientist at MIT, right? Uh, but this guy is. And he said, I don't know if he's kind of coming off the screen, people can't multitask very well, and when they say they can, they're deluding themselves. And the other part of that quote that didn't fit on, quite on the slide is, and people are very good at deluding themselves. <laughs> so we have this world where everything is really busy, and we say it's okay, we can handle it all at the same time, and more and more, our own experience in science is saying we just can't. And so that's really the, the truth in the end, is that if you're really going to progress in one single direction, you have to have focus. And you have to have focus on one thing, one at a time, without sort of the noise and chaos. And another quote I found um, that I really liked and really spoke to me, spoiler alert about where we're headed in this presentation, but you already know because you read the description, is uh, the guy who created the bullet journal said, inevitably we find ourselves tackling too many things at the same time, spreading our focus so thin that nothing gets the attention it deserves. This is commonly referred to as being busy. Busy, however, is not the same thing as productive. And I saw that and I thought, this is my life, <laughs> you know? And it's not just my work life, it's my life outside of work, it's just sort of this noise, and then the day ends and the weekends, and you think, where did I even, where did I even get to? So that's where we are with things, right? We, at least me, I work in a, an environment where things are coming at me all the time. I'm aware of my own human limitations about multitasking, and I'm aware of what I need is the sort of focus to get where I'm going. And so, Let's go on a journey. And I was thinking about how to represent this, and our lovely designer in the back of the room made me a lovely um, <laughs> timeline, which I'm not quite, not quite there yet. Um, so I need, the, before we get to the, the direction that we're headed, what I needed was this hero of a task list that's really going to get me in that direction. I thought, this one, you know, what does a hero look like, right? Wonder Woman. But I was thinking, what does my hero of a task list look like? What are the qualifications that are going to help me find the right thing, and not just settle on something that's okay, but get a structure that's going to solve all these really important problems that I have and get me the focus that I need. And so these are the sort of things that I was after. I needed to capture everything. That moment that I had in that meeting where my boss said, where I said yes and I didn't write it down had to never ever happen again. That was the first thing that I started with. I needed something I could have with me. I needed something that was easy to use so that absolutely everything would be captured somewhere. I needed to create and declare my own priority. I didn't do that before. There are these people that I heard of that sort of, these are my monthly goals and my yearly goals and I was just, you know, underwater. And I think that's sort of interesting. It, there's a lot of these systems that are goal focused and just, you know, break your yearly goals and the monthly goals into down. And I think it's kind of like a Maslow's hierarchy where if you don't know what to do today, you don't know what to do in the month. And so I kind of needed to, to solve the chaos at the beginning. I needed to find a system that would allow me to do the right things based on that priority and do them one at a time. So I could acknowledge my own inability to multitask and so I could make that progress I was after. And I think this is really important. I needed a system that would allow me to communicate to the people around me, you know, my boss, our CEO, what's going to get done, and more importantly, what is not going to get done, because I'm prioritizing the things that are going to get done. I need to say that out loud so that they know, and they can say, oh no, you know, do this other thing instead, and then we can reprioritize together. And it, most important for me, because you know, I kind of have lazy tendencies too. I needed something that was easy because so many of these systems feel like more work and more things on top of the busy and I needed something that was free or cheap and really easy to do and maintain so that I would actually do and maintain it. And so here's the beautiful timeline I was speaking of earlier. And uh, rather than an agenda, we're gonna move through time from the beginning to the end of this perfect task list quest. And we'll start with the digital tools. Because as I transitioned into working in this digital space, I thought, we have these tools, right? We have Jira, or Trello, or Asana, or whatever task we pivotal. There's so many of these digital tools, and I use them to make tasks for the people who work with me, because I'm a project manager, so I could just use them too, I thought. 
And so I started there, you know? There's gotta be something good about them. If you're work, maybe, I, I would argue if you work in development at all, you probably use one of them. And because they're good at things. There's a single source of truth. So there's this one place we all get to go and say, is that task in progress? Is someone working on it? What, what is our priority as a team? There's that, that, um, that place. And having a digital place, especially when you work remotely like I do, is really important because there's no wall that we can all walk to and look at our sticky priority. It makes it easy to collaborate. So I can make a task that's not you know, necessarily written to the standards that a developer might like, and our director of technology can help iterate it a little bit. Um, it helps, it makes it easy for us to work together and collaborate on where, on where we're headed. You can attach things. You know, you can put, work on this spreadsheet and then put the spreadsheet right there and people can access all the files and relevant information that they need. And then they each have these varying degrees of functionality. Some of them allow, you know, for a Kanban view and then a task view and back and forth and some of them don't. And some of them allow multiple assignees, which is good or bad, depending on your perspective, and some of them don't. But they have these elements of functionality and they also sort of constrain task lists in a way that work well for different teams who work in different styles working together. And so I tried. And honestly, to be truthful, I tried for a very limited amount of time because I know myself, I know my anti-tech tendencies, and digital tools just don't work for me, for my personal ta task list. They don't work because they're intangible. So there's something about seeing something on a screen and figuring out what's more important than something else. And it makes it really challenging for me to say what really is the priority in this computer space, just like all the rest of, of a lot of the working connection that I, that I do. And because of that, it becomes kind of stressful. So in the same way that I'm making tasks for other people and that's my work, then I make tasks for myself and it's more work and it's this added element of stress to my day. I don't know if it's because it's on a screen or not, but it sort of feels that way um, in my world. And they're stuck in one approach and structure. I had slides, but then I took them out of sort of, here's the pros and cons of Trello and the pros and cons of Jira, and that's kind of a different topic for a different day, and everyone has the one that they like. But no matter what you choose, you're stuck in that structure, and it's pretty inflexible as far as how to change the workflow and how to change um, the task list and things like that. And because science, in case you don't know this, I think it's kind of interesting. They've done studies that writing by hand improves your comprehension and retention of information. So what they did was they had these two different groups come in. They gave one a computer and they gave one a handwritten pad of paper and a pen. And I can't remember if they had them read something or if they read something to them, but they were allowed to take whatever notes they wanted. The people who wrote on their computers had a lot more words written down. And then they tested their comprehension both right after and then a month later, and the handwritten notes of people performed better. So there's something about condensing that information and make it, writing the most important things down. And for me, having a physical structure for notes and for my own list sort of takes advantage of this, of this scientific finding and also is really important for what I do. So I have client meetings all the time. I am not gonna be able to write down every single thing. I'm not gonna be able to review that, that note in, in super detail, but for instance, I met with a client, I think a few days ago, and I met with her a few months ago, and she was talking about how she uh, she commutes in to San Francisco from San Jose, south of the city, getting all the local geography right. But I was slowed down, and I was present with her, and that's not necessarily something I would have jotted down, but so there was some it was something I remembered, and I got to make reference to later. So. Remembering things that not only helps me manage my projects with, with my colleagues, but also manage the relationships that I have with my, with my clients. And another just fun quote, this is from, uh, I linked the study here in case you want to look at it later, but those who wrote out their notes by hand had a stronger conceptual understanding and were more successful in applying and integrating the material than those who took notes with their laptops. So just something that we're, I think, becoming more and more aware of, that technology makes our life easier, but it doesn't always work with the, our, you know, the way we have existed and evolved as humans without, without it. So, so I moved quickly away from digital tasking tools and into the pile of Post-its, the namesake of this presentation. And Post-its are great. You know, there's a lot of really cool things you can do with them. For me, what was most important is slowing down and calming down. So the first thing I had to deal with was this overwhelm, sort of all the things at the same time, all the things at the same time. And so for instance, I wrote every name of a client on a post-it, and then I just 
felt what it felt like to put one above the other. And in that feeling, I could sense, okay, this is the one that needs to be um, emailed first, and then this one. And there's something about that physicality where that let me sort of um, get out of my head and get out of the overwhelm into the into the tangible space and get out of away from your computer into the tangible. I think is a really great way to um, to slow down and and feel less overwhelmed. Like I sort of like I started to hint at it has this ideas in motion when every single task is on a post-it and you can move them around physically. It can help you align on what your priority really is and and uh, and be aware of that. And then um, this is just a, a shout out. This isn't as related to um, to do lists, but it's a really great way to collaborate with people who are not as extroverted. So as someone who is more extroverted, I think we can often get in a room and say, okay, what are we going to work on? What's most important? And the people who are going to speak loudly, most loudly to that will be the extroverts. And then you have all these really valuable opinions of people who just don't want to shout in front of the group. And so writing ideas on post-its and moving them around as a team later quietly is something that can help make sure all the ideas in the room are heard. So this is my actual personal tasking system. It's the it's hard to see because um, so it's a it's a door right um, and there's kind of this Kanban structure of open and in progress and done and I use Post-its for my personal tasking system now it's not what I'm going to recommend that you do for work it's not what I do for work there's too many things but I think that there's something really satisfying about having different systems for work and home there's something about having the separation and saying, this is what I have to do uh, with uh, you know, Lily, the strategic account manager, and this is what Lily, the human, cares about and wants to do. And it's having those separate is really valuable. So this was a Sunday. I had a backlog. If you know the Kanban structure, which I'm sure most of you do, you have a list of things that you want to do. And since you can't read them, there's things like update budget, paint nails, meal prep, prep this bad camp session, things like that. And so, um, so I have my, my backlog, and then um, what I did is I just moved them into the open column in my priority order. So I started with um, stretching and meditating just to like get centered before I got started. And then um, the next thing I put was update budget. And it's interesting because to do it in this way uh, for tasking systems, because there's always going to be the most urgent thing, you know, prepping bad camp systems session, you know, pack, you're going to be gone for two and a half weeks. Things like that will just get done before you leave, and I'll make sure that they get done, because I hope not to waste your time uh, with sessions like this, but I think that it's important to consider what's important and not urgent. So updating my budget was something that had been lingering a while. I put that number two, because that's the one that, um, that I can easily just skip and not actually get done. And then we moved down the list, and so things like you know, I put next that I was going to order a gift for my cousin who just had a baby, do something fun, and then maybe I'll, you know, bike to a coffee shop and prep these sessions, and then I'll pack. And so I have my priority list. And because each thing is on a single post-it, I've really narrowed down my focus. And there's not, it becomes less chaotic than I have so many things to do today, which is part of why, why I started this. So. This isn't something that's going to work for your work days and work lives all the time, but if you have a particularly chaotic day and it just feels overwhelming, there's nothing like super sticky post-its, because they have the extra sticky ones now, and some sort of wall and some sort of sharpie to just get to the essence of what um, of the order of operations of what you're doing. And then, because I'm a super nerd, I made a gif of me moving my post-its. <laughs> and so, ooh, I know. And so, then you do one thing, one at a time, right? And because you have all of your things in a row, you've declared at the beginning of the day what the order is, you know, honor yourself and your own priority that you've set, and then you move things into in progress. And once you're stretching, that's what I'm focusing on. And I'm not focusing on all of the other things I have to do. It just allows me that moment of centering. And then you get to do this. Move something to be done. Yeah. And I defy you to do this and not feel a deep, satisfaction and sense of accomplishment that is so much richer than crossing something off of a list. And then you move things in. So I didn't want to update my budget, but that was what was in progress. There's only one thing in progress, and I did it. So getting myself to do things I don't want to do can be an outcome of having a to-do list that really works for me. So obviously, post-its are really great. They're really great for a single day prioritization or a particular bout of overwhelm, but they have their limitations. I don't think that they're going to work for every single task, you know, task that you have to do. 
are easy to lose. <laughs> you know, they have physical limitations in that they are tiny pieces of paper. They don't travel well. I can't imagine being in that meeting with my boss and having a thing of post-it. Oh, you asked me to do that thing. Let me write it on a post-it and then just sticking them on. Just, you know, they have, they uh, don't scale well, obviously, <laughs> to, uh, you know, hundreds of different tasks. It's, uh, it's difficult to collaborate. So that, that moment that, that you might have with an in-person team where you all write things on post-its and move them onto a wall, my computer thinks I need to take a break. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anti-tech tendencies. Um, so they, that might happen again. I'm just not gonna deal with it, so just know that's probably gonna happen again. So um, it's difficult to collaborate with remote teams on physical pieces of paper, which sounds like an obvious thing, but the more we move toward having remote teams or having remote employees, we have to scale and adjust our tools accordingly. There, there is a way for post-it oh, tool yeah. that we use a lot. I'll get yeah. Of it. yeah. Well, there's really like cool. Jamboard is also an option. Um, the, the stickiness of physical post-its wear down, but, um, but it's just still my choice for my own personal tasking. So keep that in mind. Just because they don't solve all of the needs all of the time doesn't mean that they don't have their time and place of being incredibly valuable. So now that we've moved on from post-its, now this is sort of the long iteration, maybe hopefully not too long, of my, of my perfect to-do list system. And I think it's important to just nod to the steps on the way. Because a lot of times people will present, this is where I got to and it's so great, but without understanding all of the different, I tried this and it didn't work, and I tried that and it didn't work, um, can take away from the richness of, of where you end up. So I started with endless lists. So I can't have everything on Post-it, so I'm just gonna have these endless lists of pieces of paper of just like things that get done and get crossed out, and it's easy, and I think we've all been there, of sort of, I'm just gonna keep this list and I'll just carry it from day to day and um, completely unedited as it is. And it's great because get things out of your head. Again, um, I'm a tactile person, satisfying to cross things off or check things off the same way that it's satisfying to move post-its, but they, it just doesn't, it's unwieldy in the same way that post-its are. So tasks just linger on forever, it grows forever, it's difficult to prioritize. It wasn't my end system, but it was on the way. Then I thought I would be really clever and create a system with visa vis so I don't know if you have those, if you've, um, had a teacher with like a projector and those markers that they write on that don't erase until you um, put water on them. I thought I would create a system where each client would have a square and then I would write tasks in the squares with these markers and then I would erase it, which again is very satisfying. So it's gone when it's gone and then, um, you know, but each client has its spot and I don't have to have this redundancy of rewriting client names over and over again. And so it's great for those reasons, clean slate, only one time writing client names, and then disadvantage for the same reason the, the large list is, is not valuable. So there's no priority. We have these physical limits for each, for each client. Then I thought I would be really clever and buy a special planner. Has anyone bought a special planner? Like, this is what's going to work for me. Oh, yeah. Has anyone kept with that planner for more than a week? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> so, so I bought this special planner, right? All the research, science says, it's so intentional. Every day I'm gonna write my gratitude. It's gonna revolutionize my life because all these people who are smarter than me decided that this was the planner. And then I, I think I wrote on it for like two days, really. And it, it had some disadvantages. It was built for this one planner, work and personal together, and that doesn't work for me. That's not how I manage my list. It was very constricting. So there's this sort of friction, like this form I have to fill out. It felt like work, you know? This one more thing I have to do, like write your gratitude, write your intention. I can't remember everything that was on there. And it took all of these really valuable, amazing ideas and made it into this thing that was just one more thing. And then I probably filled out two pages of it, ripped those out and gave it to the Goodwill. So, so then, like the clouds parting and the light coming upon me, I came across the bullet journal. And so you'll know this isn't the end of the destination. I'm showing you how he set it up, the guy who started it, and then I'm gonna tell you how I iterated it and made it mine. Because there are elements of it that I think are really valuable, there are elements of it that don't work for me, and part of why I love this system is that it's built in order to make it your own and make it something that works for you and not just for the guy who created it. But this is the guy who created it, writer. He is a digital designer, which I think is really interesting by trade. So he's sort of in our space of like, let's try this, let's try that, let's iterate. Maybe he worked, I didn't research him too much, but maybe he used to work in an agile shop before he became this 
I created a Tesla system thought leader guy, which I think is what he does now. But he called the system an analog system for the digital age. I'm an analog person in a digital world, right? So that's great. Something else he said that I thought would really appeal to this crowd is he called his his frame his uh, bullet journal an open source productivity framework. So already, right? We're Drupal, open source. We all contribute to it. People can build their own tools that they need to be productive and accomplish their goals, simplify their lives. So he's already asking you to say, okay, this is how I think it works. How is it going to work for you? Which really attracted me to it. If you look at bullet journals or bullet journaling on YouTube, you'll probably see a lot of this. It's kind of hard to see. Just imagine someone who's really artistic with really beautiful markers doing really lovely things in notebooks with those beautiful markers. So they can just like draw perfect, you know, everything is just lovely. And there are people who've made YouTube careers of just drawing lovely things in notebooks. And it can feel intimidating because I'm not someone who can successfully draw a lovely thing in a notebook. And um, it's not what I'm after, right? Like I want to organize my life, not create something that's beautiful. So that's what I thought it looked like, but actually it looks more like this. Oh, you can see that, that's good. So it starts with a set of symbols. So they always mean the same thing. There's no more, we always have all different symbols and they all mean something different depending on how I feel. A dot means that this is a task that I need to do. And it still lives on this page and I've not migrated it or moved it anywhere else, which we'll get to in a minute. A dash means this is a note that I've taken. FYI, client meeting note, something that I need to think about maybe, but isn't a task. An open circle means that it's an event. So in this example, um, you know, I need to do my final prep for my session, that's a dot. A demo of the session for my team is an event, it's an open circle. If something has an asterisk next to it, it's priority. Make sure you do it. Like, final prep of the session has an asterisk there. And then I, I forgot to put an example on here because I've just never found this symbol relevant to myself, but an exclamation point is inspiration. Maybe he lives more in an inspired life than I do or writes you know, inspiration, but that's part of the, uh, the system as it is, is you have this way to tag inspiration. And then you have these new symbols for migration. So the day that you have your list, you just have your list, and if you complete them, you X over your dot. So it's not a dot anymore, it's an X. It's no longer a task to do. If you move it to another day or another list, you'll use this, I think it's a greater than sign, but sort of right, there you go, <laughs> greater than sign to say that you've migrated it. If you schedule it, then it's a less than sign. And then if you're not gonna do it after all, you draw a line through it. So now we have, we've uh, created these symbols where I know what's something I have to do. I know what all these things are. And I know really quickly glancing at this page that the only one that's still left to do and isn't captured somewhere else is the top one. And so it just is this really efficient sort of shorthand that I have with myself and my to-do list. So you have these um, core modules as part of the bullet journal system. So you have an index. This isn't stuff that I, that I do, but this is what he recommends. So you may hand, write a handwritten index. So, you know, page one, this day, page two, that day, and then every day you write on your pages what, your, what those pages are so that you can easily reference them later. It's a pretty utilitarian system. You have this thing called a future log. So you divide a page maybe into threes and you say, you know, with the September, I want to think about, you know, this thing, text. Think about it in September. So it's there, it's written down, it's in the future, it's kind of uncluttered from today. Um, and then you have a monthly log. So you transcribe things from your future log into your monthly log. Once it comes to be September, I say, oh yeah, in January I wanted to think about that thing. Now that it's September, I'm going to do that. But you also have a, a calendar list potentially. So on the 14th, I'm going to fly to San Francisco or whatever it is that you're going to do. And then you have a ta you have this task list in this calendar for the monthly system. And then you have a daily log, which I started to show you, but I'll show you in more depth later. Sort of, these are the things that are coming up, just rapid logging as I go. You know, oh, I forgot, I'm doing this today, I'm doing that, and then just all in a list. And then you have um, the process. So the bullet journal official process is rapid logging for daily logs, kind of what I talked about. You audit them at the end of every month. And so when you make your new monthly log, you say, here's all the things that came up while I was living my life. I'm going to move things over into the next month monthly log. And I'll migrate all the valuable tasks either into the next month or into this sort of later future log. And if it's not worth my time anymore, I'll just cross it out. So 
that's what it looks like. This is what a daily log would look like. So kind of what I was, I think that's the same fake one screenshot that I made for you and showed you earlier, but it's all just a mix and match, a barrage of things. So, you know, I'm gonna do this demo. Here's the feedback from the demo. I now have an action of implementing that feedback. I'm flying at 5.45. I also, oh shoot, I need to water my plants before I fly. And so it's just this long string of things. And then once I finish that day, I just write the next day underneath it. As part of, I don't like this, which you'll see later, but as part of the official sub system is it just kind of goes on um, into infinity of that. And so that's his system. And I realized there were part of things I liked about it and some things I didn't like about it. And now we're getting to it. This is the perfect for now to do list. So thank you for coming on this journey with me. Here's what it looks like, kind of, well, pieces of it. So I got rid of some of his symbols. I don't like an exclamation point, that doesn't matter to me. I don't like an open circle. Why am I writing events in my to-do list that are in my calendar, right? So I'm editing down some of his symbols and I'm adding my own symbols. So in my life, there's this thing called a blocker. So other people are blocking me from being able to do my action. And I want to see that in my task list really quickly, just sort of visual symbols. And so I added a blocker symbol. So you can see here, there's a, there's a square there. Client email follow-up. And then I write next to it, who is blocking it? So this one is being blocked by Andrew. Sitting back here right now, standing. So, so I know that I can't do that client email follow-up until I get the feedback that I asked Andrew about. And it's just something that's useful in my life because it's on my list. It might be on my priority top five list, which I'll get to in a little bit, but if I don't get that feedback from Andrew, I can't do it. And so now I know the task is bug Andrew for feedback instead of follow up with the client until it gets unblocked. So just something valuable I, I added. And then also the communication tools. So especially working remotely, and I think working in agencies in general, I'm always like meeting with so-and-so, email so-and-so, call so-and-so. And so instead of just writing those things over and over again, I have these symbols that I can use to hone, to. Um, easily see what I need to do. So for instance, um, this one is email follow-up. So I have just like a, so that's what that first one means is the, the envelope is an email and then the second one I feel like that kind of looks like a calendar and the third one kind of looks like a phone and it's not to make things more difficult or just add more symbols to remember but they worked for me and so I added them. And so I have my own way to do the migration. I love the dot task to do. Like you take one thing out of this, just having a different a symbol that means to do that becomes a different symbol when you finish it is really valuable. I still do the complete one. Um, I migrate tasks to future days. So I'll talk about that in a second. I set up all of my days at the beginning of the week. So each day has its own page. And so I migrate to a separate day. The sort of scheduled one didn't quite make sense to me, but to me, if someone else says that they'll do it, so I'm supposed to do this, but someone says, oh, I'll, I'll take care of that for you, no worries, then I'll use that symbol. And then task is irrelevant, I'll cross out, or in this situation, um, Andrew got me the information I needed, so I crossed that out, and then I was able to, to finish that task. So each page has its own sheet. I did that at the end because I, there's a lot more content around it. The, because each day has its own piece of paper, it has this separate page on the left of meeting notes. So I always, each bright page is always the day's task list. And then I have meeting notes next to it. So I referenced earlier why I write my meeting notes by hand. I do this most of the time because science says, because it works for me, because of all these things. And also because I can use my same symbols. So if I'm in a meeting, I write the three letter code of the client, I write what that meeting was called, and then I write my notes with a dash. And if something comes up like an action item, I write it like a dot, because that triggers to my brain, there's a dot there, there's something that I have to do, or transcribe to somewhere else, or something like that. And it's easy to reference, because I have in my Google suite, so think this is unwieldy, right? You have this whole notebook of pages, but if I want to say, you know, what happened with that client meeting, I can look at my Google Calendar, figure out what day that meeting took place on, and then find the day and find the meeting really easily. So how do I set up my task pages? Um, set them up at the beginning of the week. There's a page for each day. I like to make it fun. So I think part of lowering the friction is to make it fun, however that is for you. So I have a different color pen. I always write the day in bubble letters. I don't know why, I just started doing that and it makes me smile when I look at it. So when you're thinking about crafting a system, figure out little easy, low friction ways to make yourself smile. 
set it up at the beginning, like I said. I've created three priority sections. This is something that I've done recently, but it really helps when I'm moving tasks from day to day to say, even as I'm adding them to the day, is this a medium priority, is it low priority? It helps later when I'm declaring what my top five are, which I'll, like I said, I'll talk about. But I have those sections. I don't always use them for priority. This is a blank piece of paper, so I can change it whenever I want to change it. And there are days when I just have 20 tasks related to one client, so I just make a section called client A, and then I write my 20 tasks there. And then all I have is high priority and everything else. But it doesn't always have to stay the same day by day and over time. I think this is sort of where it is right now, but I'm sure it will continue to change. And then each task I flag with caps, so what client it is. So it's just a long list of bad can present high logistics today. You can check that off and then after I'm done. So this is the process of how, of how it all works. And this is where I think kind of the, the genius of the bullet journal system lies, is that every, at the end of each day, or the beginning of the day, I write down everything on my list. Some of them, a lot of them, are migrated from the day before, right? So every single day I can write a new list. And it feels like friction. It did to me. So when I heard about bullet journaling, like, oh, you're gonna rewrite your task list every day? That sounds like a lot of wasted effort. Probably spent about 15 minutes on it, but there are often things that happen, like in that meeting with my boss, where it's probably a two minute task that it would have gotten done, but I couldn't do it then because I was in a meeting. And so it, at the end of the day, when I move my list, I can say, oh, that's a two minute task, I'm just gonna do that right now. That happens a lot. There's things that happen in the middle of other things. I just take care of them. I'm not transcribing them. Or I thought that was important. It's not important anymore. But the thing about that is you're editing and cleaning your list and getting it to the most um, either important or urgent things every single day. And in the act of re-handwriting them, you can remind yourself, oh, you know, this one was low priority yesterday, but it's been low priority for a week important but not urgent, it now has to be high priority today. And so you yourself are physically moving those things and it's that exercise of prioritization that you would get had you been writing everything on a pile of post-its. And then what I do is I prioritize my top five tasks. And this is new. So we at Columbia are a digital, or a remote agency rather, so we don't always have a stand-up where we stand around in, you know, in person. We have a Slack channel. And so at first I thought, oh, I'm, there's too many things going on. How am I going to say what my priority is in the Slack channel? But if I go through and say, these are my top five, then all I have to do is type that out, top five in the Slack channel. And even though my system is analog, suddenly my team all over the place can see what my priority actions are. And I, I say that it's sort of in progress because I have five down. I don't always get to all five. And what I really want is to figure out how many do I actually do a day outside of meetings, and then I want to prioritize those. Whether it maybe it's three, maybe it's four, it'll change. And then, like I said, you communicate your priority. So that's how the powers that be, if they say, oh, you're not working on this thing, don't forget, then it can become a conversation of, okay, well, I'm adding something. What do I need to be taking, taking away? And then you're really claiming your work day and your stress level and your concurrency by saying, you know, these are the, the number of things that I'll be able to commit to. And then this is a really hard part and it requires your own personal discipline. You work each task in order. And I love saying at the beginning of the day, you know, it's fresh, it's morning, I've just had my coffee and this is my list and I'm going to go. And then the day starts an urgent but not important things happen, and I get an email and I want to address it, and it takes my discipline to say, I said that number two was the next important thing, I'm gonna work number two next. And if I get through my five things, then I'll continue on to everything else. And as the day progresses, things come up and I add them to my list in the priority that they're in. So even as I'm writing things down, something comes up while I'm doing something else, I have that mental moment of which list am I going to write this in, and then right away I'm already calling and honing my list. And as I'm thinking about my top five, I know the section to look in is that high priority section. Those are probably where they're all going to live. So because I'm super nerdy, I made a video of me doing things. I don't know if it's going to work. So this is something becoming a blocker. As you can see there, I'm filming myself with my notebook. But yeah, see it became a blocker. So I'm writing down this is who's blocking it, and this is what it looks like. So that's the thing in motion. This is what migration looks like. So, you know, I'm moving something to the next day, so that's low priority, but it's been low priority for a while, so I'm gonna move it into the medium priority section as I migrate it. 
So there's that. Um, and then um, this is something what scheduling looks like, but I don't know what that one is. Oh, I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Huh? okay. So, to close, some hot tips about setting this up. Um, get a nice notebook. I used to be a cheapskate person who's like, oh, moleskins, schmoleskins. But someone gave this to me as a promotional thing, and, um, and I love them. So get a notebook that you, get a notebook that you like. And then try it out, you know, start with the out of the box version, start with my version, start with something that you've crafted in your brain as you've been listening to this and, um, and change it as you go. That's sort of the beauty of, it's just a notebook with lines, it's not a special thing you have to buy, it's not a pre-created pre structure, you can really create what you want out of it. And so I know you're wondering what's next for Lily and her to-do list, right? It's like, where's this journey going to go next? Time for a break. <laughs> What's next is moving up, right? So I didn't know what to do about these big quarterly goals because I was just overwhelmed with today. And now that I'm not as overwhelmed with today, then I can sort of look out. So what I've started doing is looked at my week, looked at my, um, my meetings for the week, my priorities for the week at the beginning, and now at the Monday stand-up I say, these are my weekly goals. And I'm declaring them out loud to my team and so it makes it more real and I'm more accountable for them. And I want to just continue that. So these are my monthly goals. And then as I'm crafting my daily list, those things that I've said at the beginning of the week or the beginning of the month are important and urgent things may come up, but I know they're in my mind, they're declared, they're written down, and I'm going to get to them. So because we have a couple of minutes left, I know you mentioned digital, um, digital post-it note things. There are other tools I really like that um, I just want to give a nod to. They're not as directly related to task lists, but they did help me put the session together. So if you want to give a session, if you want to augment the way you give sessions, um, the way I did, I started this was, this is the actual jam board I made. So moving things around, I uh, thought about how I was going to, to craft this, and then I moved it into, um, into a mind map. So that's how I organized my thoughts, just something kind of uh, random and interesting. Um, like I said, I work at an agency called Calamino. We're at in the exhibit hall if you want to come say hi. I'm also around Bad Camp and speaking tomorrow at 11.15 with a session called Translating Dribble into English with Props. So, you know, some exciting Saturday props after the party tonight. And um, you can also reach me on LinkedIn or via email. So we have about two minutes left, probably not for questions, but you can see me on the email. If you, oh yeah, go ahead. I've got a comment. Yeah. If you're interested in bullet journaling and using Mac, there is an app called Note Plan. Ooh. It does bullet journaling both on your Mac and on your iPhone. So that if you if you're trying to find some hybrid of the digital slash and the bullet journaling process, that's interesting. Um, so as a person who totally keeps lists all the time and does a lot of different things. Um, I'm finding it hard to like find the balance between making really brand new lists with like I'm reading with this person and doing mm -hmm. that stuff and the time and effort that takes versus just doing the tasks. So how do you like decide or how do you get to the point where you're like, I'm just gonna spend 15 minutes doing this work at the beginning of the day yeah. and then launch into it and maybe not brand new with every single thing you do and you update it throughout the day. Like, do you spend too much time. I think that's an interesting that question. <laughs> and I think that it's sort of, if something's going to be, if I have the time and something's a less than 15 minute task, I'll just do it and I don't write it down. I'm not, a, I want to write it down so I can cross it off kind of person. That's always, so I'm not a, and I think that that is, that is a good question, something I'll get to. But to me, it's sort of the, the pros and cons and the time that it takes to maintain it versus the like awful embarrassment of not doing things I said I would do is sort of what I'm balancing. Yeah. So for, for me, the writing versus the typing was just a huge differentiator. Um, and so I bought myself a surface. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in a meeting, I'm writing everything by hand in my surface. And the wonderful thing is I can search. So everyone in my organization knows I'm the James Comey of note takers, right? <laughs> like, so don't say anything in a meeting. If I'm in there, if I'm going to write it down and I'm going to call you on it, right? Yeah. Um, but having all the paper, it was like, oh, we had that meeting. She said this, but then I get the search functionality mm -hmm. uh, with the with the surface. So anything that you can get where you can write and search, you know, that was just 
a game changer for me. A lot of hybrid folks in the room, for sure. Um, I want to be mindful of everyone's time. We're just about at time, so I'm going to let y'all go. But if you want to stay and talk, feel free. Thank you again.